Hey everybody, this is a quick air bike wing update. And I know I've been behind on my updates. I apologize for that. Life's been very busy. And I'm using a paper plate for my notes here, okay? So first of all, before you build this wing or cut any piece of wood on this airplane, know the drawings, memorize the drawings, sleep with the drawings, um, just mentally masturbate with the drawings, okay? Just do everything you can to know everything about the drawings. Because if you do anything out of order and there's not really an order in the drawing so you, you need to there's some notes in the drawings that if you don't listen to you're going to get way behind the airplane in a ifr condition and hit the mountain okay so know the drawings another thing is the hard points on this um, airplane have these aluminum um, uh, brackets and where they bolt through the spar is some plywood reinforcement. The drawings say tack that in place and, in, and glue those in after the ribs are installed. The reason why is that that plywood adds an eighth of an inch to each side of the spar. And if you glue those in, you'll never get these ribs in. These four ribs right here will never go in because you got a hard point there and a hard point there. When you add an eighth and eighth, that's a, that's a half inch more that the opening on the rib will not get past. So if you epoxy those in, you are screwed. You're going to have to cut up your ribs. Now, when I was looking at the drawings, I thought, why would I want to tack that later? But luckily, I, I listened to the drawings. I fought the impulse to build the entire spar, okay? So make sure you follow the directions. Um, drag braces, they are big cross members that go through this rib. To get them in, you need to be able to bend the, the ribs a little bit to get them in because they're in compression. I epoxied the nose of all my ribs on first, but the rear ribs are not epoxied yet, so I can still get a little bit of movement back there and get those into place, okay? Um, then you have compression members. Those are going to go from the front to rear and between the spars so that it gives the ribs a little bit more strength in, in the compression um, uh, mode. Um, oh, as, about epoxies. I've had two or three people reach out to me and say, you know, why are you using epoxy? You should be using tight bond. You know, look, I don't care what you use. It's your ass in the airplane, okay? But 10 years ago, I did experiments with a whole bunch of spruce, um, basswood, plywood, balsa wood, oak, and maple. And the wood glues are horrible on hardwoods. Sometimes they don't even cure. If you got a six by six inch piece of hardwood and you glue it together really tight, sometimes in the middle it hasn't dried within a week. Okay, because air is not getting in there. Epoxy is a chemical reaction. It's going to adhere very quickly. I'm not sure if it's a capillary action or what, but in all my strength testing, epoxy was stronger than the Elmer's wood glue in the tight bond red. Okay, now I'm talking about structural epoxy, not your five minute junk that I think is worse than CA. Um, 30 minute epoxy is okay. This epoxy literally takes about six hours just to set up that it's not still slimy and it takes 48 hours to completely cure. Well, by then it's really soaked into the wood. Um, wood glues will soak in there where if there's no oxygen, it just doesn't seem to set up as quick. But hey, guess what? It's your ass in the airplane. If you want to use tight bond, build it. When you bought this as a kit, when it was available as a kit, it came with structural epoxy, not wood glues. Okay. And when I did a poll on my Facebook, 92% of you said you use structural epoxy for experimental aircrafts over wood glue. So I'm going to just stick with what I did. Oh, and in my testing 10 years ago, epoxy was only 7% heavier um, per uh, six by six inches than wood glue, okay? Next, um, make sure that you um, understand that there's an outside rib on each end of this because there's gonna be a piece of birch plywood that goes on the ends and you don't need your cap strips, I mean your uh, gussets, you don't need your get gussets installed on the outside of the ribs, okay? One thing I'm going to change in this wing design, though, is I am going to have cap strips on each of the ribs. There's a cap strip on the inboard two and the outboard two, but there's none on these per the drawings. 
I've known a lot of other people, at least I've seen pictures of other people's wings where they've added cap strips. So I'm gonna add cap strips on mine just to give the fabric a little bit more to sit on than a quarter by quarter piece of spruce, okay? Um, that's pretty much this update. The next thing after all of this will be the aileron. I've had a couple of people tell me it's very difficult to make the aileron on this. It is a slick, cool design. I don't know if I would use the word difficult. I know I haven't built it yet, but it looks tedious. It looks like you gotta really take your time, but hell, all of this takes time, people, okay? All of this takes time. So that's pretty much this update. I went through my little paper plate list here, and I'm just, look, I'm just ecstatic at how straight this has turned out um, and just how awesome it's turned out. If you don't know, the black stuff that you see in some of these videos is carbon fiber toe I added, and I've done that to my model airplanes for years. I've done testing of that stuff. I've done some videos on it. So don't tell me that it won't help because I know it will. So uh, rock on everybody, have an awesome day and I will try to get more updates done as soon as I can. Thanks a lot everybody and have an awesome day.